Right, so uh, we kind of come to the end of the DHIS2 Level 1 Tracker Data Use Academy. So uh, we have been able to cover a lot of different topics uh, related to this academy, but this doesn't mean that everything comes to an end. Of course, in this, uh, uh, in this course of this academy, there is one more day where we will be having the final feedback and the uh, final examination for this uh, academy. But having said that, there is a lot more that we offer you when it comes to the trainings related to DHIS2 and that is what we are planning to discuss. Right, so uh, in this session we kind of uh, try to cover the areas around uh, what are the DHIS2 academies, different types of academies and what do we mean by local training and how, how to follow the tracker development and then support and additional resources. Right. So let's first talk about DHS2 Academies. Now, DHS2 Academies introduce the latest features and applications that uh, and provide an overview of best practices for implementation. That is why we have this DHS2 Academies and that's why we have to keep on repeating them. So it's kind of important to note that uh, probably some of you may think that if you attend a Tracker Use Academy, say in 2022, that it is for the lifetime and you don't really need to attend it. So it's like this. So if you are really familiar and hands-on with DHIS2 and you really keep uh, using the DHIS2 on a day-to-day basis, you may not really need to attend an, an academy related to Tracker Use again. But then again, the thing is, like, if you don't use DHIS2 tracker, or like, if you are if you are kind of an administrator or a data manager who is not really hands-on with uh, what happens with DHIS2 tracker, then of course it makes complete sense for you to probably attend the same academy maybe in two years' time, like as as it permits, because the thing is, we'll be discussing about latest features, and things are really changing fast. Even for us who are kind of uh, regularly using DHIS2. Um, we always refer the various resources available for us to keep updated with what is there because it's, it's a lot to cover now uh, given that DHIS2 is so big. So DHIS2 academies are meant to train the core team staff and not the end users. So meaning like if your country or your health program has end users who are field level users who will be actually using the DHIS2 to capture data. So DHIS2 academies are not really meant for them. So these are kind of meant for the core team. So who do we mean by core team? So it's given uh, like looking at the scale of the implementation. So if you have a national level uh, implementation, then this core team that we refer to in this context, refer to the national level central team who will, who's in charge in customizing, training, and uh, preparing user documents and things like that and as well as there may be other users in a, in a, in a national level instance where um, these users will be somewhat giving feedback and also may be involved in training and sometimes even customizing right so they are also part of this but uh, if it is a kind of a very program specific or a, uh, say organization based implementation then it's going to be kind of different so the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's a very contextual decision to define who is core team. But uh, uh, what we want to mention here is that this core team only involves, um, sorry, uh, this the DHS2 training, the DHS2 academies are only targeted towards the core team and not the end users. So these are seen as supplemental to the in-country trainings and these do not actually um, uh, are meant to replace them. Right. So the thing is, in-country training is uh, is a different thing that we have to do uh, when we are kind of uh, uh, conducting a training program related to a specific uh, program. Say, for example, if you have a TB campaign and then um, in this TB campaign, you want to conduct a training program very specific for the TB related um, data capture, data analysis and all. So these have to be very specific. You can, of course, develop uh, the user material and the training material based on the academies that we conduct, but they have to be very uses, uh, the, the program centric and the use cases have to be from that program. So these are different. So these we can't actually supplement by having um, uh, the DHS2 common training programs uh, or DHS2 academies, right? And in addition, they provide an opportunity for countries in the region 
to network and share their successes and challenges with other members of the DHIS2 community. Okay, so there is always uh, uh, there is always sharing of knowledge. Actually, like right now, we are conducting this DHIS2 academies online, right? But it used to be on site most of them and we are going to have all these uh, different types of uh, uh, I mean some of these training programs which will be coming uh, on site again so there's again when you are on site when you are together there's a lot of opportunity for interactions and sharing knowledge and even in these academies we, we we see how others are asking questions and we kind of learn from them so we try to interact as much as possible right so what are the uh, different types of uh, DHS2 uh, training academies which are available? So the first thing is we have uh, DHS2 levels, like different, uh, different uh, academy levels. So the first one is the DHS2 level one academies. So when it comes to level one academies, we have uh, currently four different flavors or four different types of academies. So first one is designed for data use and then we have analytic tools tracker configuration and the one we are doing right now which is tracker use so um, what do we cover in each of these academies so in level one uh, sorry so level one tracker configuration academy discusses about um, uh, it provides you an introduction to configuring and managing the tracker programs so the general topics that we cover includes uh, various tracker terminologies data model and configuration of uh, tracker program and how to configure the tracker dashboard and how to configure relationships and how to manage user roles user groups and program access levels and how configuration of program rules indicators and notifications and, uh, and, and these kind of metadata which is purely about configuration takes place which we actually did not cover in this academy And then we have level one analytic tools. So here uh, what we do is like uh, we are discussing about how to use various analytic tools available within the DHIS2. So uh, here we discuss uh, and we deep dive about various tools such as uh, um, maps, pivot tables and then features uh, such as the validation rules, interpretations and then charts and dashboard applications. How uh, we can use them to make best out of uh, the DHIS2 and to uh, uh, kind of train your end users on how to do the decision making based on the data that is captured in the DHIS2. And then here in this academy, uh, uh, the design for data use is like mainly focusing on the linkages between configuration and the design of analytic outputs. Right, so here, um, just give me one second. Yeah, sorry about that, I had some issues related to Zoom, okay. So uh, design for data use covers the linkages between configuration and design for analytics outputs. So the main topics that we cover in this academy includes uh, the configuration of various dimensions and disaggregations for use of data and uh, to, for use of data in DHS2 analytic tools. So this is about configuration, but we are configuring the DHS2 mainly targeting how to use the data. And then also we discuss about best practices for this configuration to allow users to more easily generate complex outputs, right? So sometimes um, we feel like we just need to configure the instance and then we think about how to analyze the data. It should not be like that. We always need to have an idea what kind of different um, analysis is required from your DHS2 instance and then you do the configuration. And then configuration of additional analytic applications including data quality, bottleneck analysis and the scorecard applications so all these are part of uh, the Design for Data Use Academy. And when it comes to the Level 2 Academies related to Tracker, of course we have different types of Level 2 Academies, but here we are only discussing the Academies uh, at Level 2 related to Tracker. We have three of them. 
So one we have for Android and then we have for disease surveillance and tracker implementation management. So when it comes to Android academies, we have two separate tracks. So the first track is for DHIS to Android implementation where we are discussing uh, I mean the configuration and deployment, right? And the second track is on Android development. So uh, we have something called DHIS2 Android SDK. So here we are mainly discussing on how to build applications for Android using the DHIS2 Android SDK. So this, this academy of course is uh, conducted based on the demand. So we used to have these academies again uh, uh, on site some time back, but currently uh, most of them will be online. But uh, then moving forward, uh, it's quite likely that they will be having these academies on, uh, on site again. So in DHS2 Android implementation academies, we discuss and we learn on how to collect data with a mobile device for your tracker and event programs and how user management happens on Android and how to modify metadata to work well with the, with the Android application. This include one of, um, I mean like things like colors, icons and other Android specific uh, settings. How are you configuring it? Uh, and then how to test, deploy and manage Android application at scale, at country level, like what are the different tools you require to actually do an implementation on Android. It's not just customizing DHIS2. You might have to uh, uh, deal with so many other uh, technologies when you are um, uh, especially deploying uh, so many devices across a large number of users. And then of course it also discusses about Android app development roadmap and probably what will be included in future releases. When it comes to the Android Development Academy, here we learn how to develop our own custom Android application on top of DHS2 Android SDK. So uh, this is a specialized area of course, uh, but then here we will be mainly discussing about uh, uh, the D SDK uh, in the DHS2 Android and how you can leverage functionalities and features available on SDK to build your own custom applications. So um, we are discussing about how to communicate with your DHS2 instance and how to keep your offline database synchronized with the server and how to facilitate the access to the data model, right? So this uh, focus only on your functionality, user flow and interfaces, right? And then we have the DHS2 Tracker Implementation Management Academy. So this again is a, is a, is a specialized academy uh, which focuses on planning and managing tracker implementations versus configuration of tracker program. So here we are not really going into uh, how to configure the tracker programs and topics like that, but this is mostly about how to manage your implementation, how to plan your implementation. So this mainly targets uh, the managers of, uh, uh, of organizations, ministries who will be responsible for overseeing DHS2 tracker implementations as well as DHS2 technical leads who need to understand the availability, uh, to, who need to understand the available tracker features, right? So you kind of learn the features available and you plan your implementation. So we discuss about uh, uh, and provide an overview of number of different uh, tracker features and um, outline strategies for managing tracker implementations and we provide tools to assess your internal readiness for implementing tracker and we support development of a long-term tracker implementation uh, plan uh, that can be reviewed on a regular basis in this particular uh, academy but it does not focus on configuration right if you are if your focus is about uh, how learning how to configure your dhs to tracker then you should actually consider the level one tracker configuration academy or scheduling and in-country tracker training this is uh, the suggestion if your if your focus is mostly about learning how to configure. Right then we have the disease surveillance academy. So this one focuses on the implementation of aggregate and case-based disease surveillance systems, and we target implementation personnel responsible for the configuration and adaptation of these uh, systems in the country. Right. So that's that's kind of like the focus of this particular academy. And uh, here we discuss the integrated approach of disease surveillance and we review how to modify standardized disease surveillance packages for local use 
um, and also we uh, we discuss how to add additional diseases and to map indicators dashboard etc and demonstrates the configuration of surveillance related features such as uh, validation notifications and how to define predictors and then review standard outputs associated with the surveillance packages. So it's, it's all about surveillance. So we'll be discussing um, uh, leveraging DHIS2 features based on surveillance use cases. So that's what we do in this uh, uh, type of academics. Right. So this kind of outlines all the different academies that we have uh, in the level zero, which we refer to as foundational level, and then the level one and level uh, two. So in level zero or the foundational level, we have uh, DHS to aggregate fundamentals, right? And then we capture analysis and um, uh, we, we do customization in that. And then we have DHS to event fundamentals. And on level one, we have uh, the tracker related uh, webinars, use cases and features, and the two different academies that, that one you are participating now, which is the DHS to tracker use and the tracker configuration academy. And in level two, related to uh, uh, DHS2 tracker, we have DHS2 Android implementation, uh, tracker implementation management, and the DHS2 surveillance. So these are the three academies that we, we can recommend um, if you are interested uh, to deep dive in, in DHS2 tracker at level two. Right, so now let's look at uh, what we mean by local training. So DHS2 academies are very generic and it is not applied to your local system, right? So here we, we, we take some uh, use cases, some sample databases, scenarios, and we discuss, uh, uh, I mean, these scenarios uh, based, on, based on the standard use cases that we have in our academy databases, right? But you probably have many specific questions about your own implementations that were not uh, covered here. So the best way to continue is to implement, uh, to, to, to supplement uh, learnings from this academy uh, with the local trainings. So these, uh, in these local trainings, that uh, they can apply the skills covered in this academy and uh, other academies that you have attended to your local implementation. So you can actually target uh, a particular local implementation that you have and probably even reuse some of the material and um, the documentation that we have in these academies and design um, training modules and the training documentation very specific to your use case because then I think your participants will be able to uh, uh, get best out of it because it's more closer to their uh, working environment. And uh, to do this, you can always reach out to your local uh, his group or the, I mean, in this Asia region, we have the Hisp Asia hub to discuss what might be best suitable uh, uh, on conducting these kind of training programs. Right. So when it comes to the tracker in DHIS2, like many other components such as analytics and platform, tracker is an area which uh, keeps developing really fast. So how to follow tracker development? So the thing is, the DHIS2 has different release cycles and patches, okay? So generally, DHIS2 has, uh, uh, DHIS2 releases two new versions uh, per year. So this generally takes place uh, one in October and the other one in April. So that's generally when we have the releases, the new releases. So uh, uh, the, now probably uh, in, in few weeks time, you will have uh, the release of version 2.39. So we have two main releases per year. And in addition, there'll be patch releases, which are kind of uh, continuous releases to, um, to uh, mostly these patch releases will not be addressing uh, many new features, but they, these are kind of security patches, performance, and then uh, bug fixing. So these are the ones that will be addressed mainly in this patch releases. So we provide patch releases to the current DHS2 version, which is which is the latest we have, and two versions uh, uh, before that. So for example, if the current version is 2.38, we'll be supporting mainly 2.37 and 2.36, right? So that's why we always advise you to try and be in a, in a version, which is at least two versions behind the current release. Because if you are stuck 
in an older version, it might be difficult for you to get the patch releases because these will address mainly the security and uh, the performance related concerns. So uh, especially if you are trying to go for a countrywide implementation that can scale, that is why it is really advisable um, to be on a latest version of DHIS2. Right. Now, DHIS2 has a lot of features and it will be incorporating so many new features. In fact, like DHIS2 is, is one of the fastest growing uh, open source softwares in the health domain because it is receiving so many feedbacks across more than 70 plus countries which are using DHIS2 at national level. So, the D, uh, so due to that, we have something called DHIS2 roadmap. So the DHIS2 roadmap is something that is publicly available with prioritization of new features and fixes uh, uh, which is actively occurring. So you can refer this roadmap by uh, following this link here dhs2.org slash roadmap and there uh, it is updated for each release throughout the year uh, to keep on top of changing priorities. So priorities also um, for DHIS2 keeps changing. So we never anticipated COVID-19 to emerge uh, in the, at the start of 2020. So some of the priorities that we had probably in latter part of 2019, they were changed and new priorities emerged because we had uh, like global requirements around few, few, um, few areas which, are, uh, which were not identified before. Okay, so that way it, is, it, is, it really makes sense if you want to plan your implementation to know what will be upcoming. Uh, in, in, I mean, in, in the new releases, what will be the features that you can expect in DHS2 so you can plan when to upgrade and kind of advocate your uh, the administrators, the high level officials. So it's, it's very handy to be uh, familiarized with the roadmap. Right. And in addition, DHS2 has uh, many social media, uh, uh, DHS2 is present in social media. So DHS2 has a separate channel in the YouTube and DHS2 has a, a Facebook page and a Twitter account. And we also have the DHS2 community. So these are the uh, main social media uh, presence uh, or social media related, uh, uh, I mean, social media tools where you can get to know about uh, DHS2 and probably uh, get your issues clarified. Right, so what are the additional resources that uh, we provide? So the first thing is about the documentation. So documentation is a great resource that uh, covers a range of topic, topics uh, from simple to complex. I know it can be a bit too overwhelming at first, but uh, my personal experience again is that documentation has been really useful. Um, uh, in all these years for me to keep in track of what is available in DHIS2 because sometimes it, it, it keeps uh, it becomes really difficult uh, to be familiar with all different uh, components and features and the limitations in various DHIS2 tools right so when that happens it uh, goes really handy uh, for you to check what is there in the DHIS2 uh, documentation. So the documentation of course has four different cate uh, categories that we cover we have the DHS2 documentation for user, implementer, developer, and system administrators, right? So you need to uh, check each different types of uh, document based on the requirements that you have, and they are different uh, to each other. And the documentation is available uh, in this URL. How to access the DHS2 training resources? So DHS2 has to, uh, is using uh, two main platforms to uh, provide the training uh, resources. So the first one is the DHS2 Academy where you will be able to um, uh, refer, uh, I mean, if you go to academy.dhs2.org, you will be able to find the self-paced courses and have access to them. And then we have the training.dhs2.org, which is the Moodle-based system which you are currently accessing. And uh, we also have material that we have designed based on the priorities. So for example, uh, during COVID-19, there was a lot of DHS2 based customizations and implementations that took place, which needed rapid uh, adoption, deployment, scaling up. So uh, we, we, we knew like countries don't really have too much time 
in designing and developing this uh, uh, training material and again uh, following the user guides to set up uh, uh, their implementations based on their country context so that's why we have separate set of uh, user material available for local adaptation which you can uh, for COVID-19 which you can access by following the URL here and usually when someone asks about DHIS2 or else if you want to quickly try out if something works in a DHIS2 it makes more sense uh, for you to use a test environment right so you may be having your own test or development environments for your countries but all of us in general to test features and to demonstrate what DHIS2 looks like we use DHIS2 demo instances so we have uh, several different demo instances which has uh, pre-configured uh, metadata along with some dummy data available so that you can actually show how things are configured in a standard way and also show some outputs like some visualizations also when you are demonstrating and it can also come in handy if you are testing a feature. So these uh, URLs are uh, the you, these can be accessed by following these two URLs the play.dhs2.org or demos.dhs2.org. Right. And then, of course, we have the DHS2 community of practice. So DHS2 community of practice, I think we had a, I mean, you all must be familiar and you all must be members of the DHS2 community of practice. And we had a separate session on that. So this is the kind of online forum where you can engage with all different DHS2 implementers, DHS2 developers, and people who are interested in using DHS2. So you can meet all of them and you can ask questions, you can uh, respond to questions already asked and help others. So it's a community of practice. So it is not just a Q&A forum where people ask questions and someone answers. It's always about sharing experience. So especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, how all these uh, uh, experiences and whatever the resources that were developed uh, from different countries and his groups were shared thankfully to all this uh, knowledge sharing experiences that took place in the DHS2 community of practice. So it's a very act active, vibrant community. So um, it's one of the best that is around. So I really recommend uh, you to become a member if you are not a member already and to be engaged actively. And uh, even if you have some feature requests, you can always discuss that, if, that there. And uh, you can even get uh, more people's votes uh, to support new features. So you can do a lot there. So I highly encourage you all uh, to be active on DHS2 community of practice. Right, so that kind of concludes um, the, the final uh, wrapping up session, which where we have discussed about uh, so many different components, uh, uh, which goes together with the academy material and the topics that we have covered during this DHS2 Academy. But we also have a final feedback session tomorrow um, uh, where you will where we will be kindly requesting all of you to provide feedback of uh, this particular academy so that we can definitely consider them and improve our future academies. And also if you have not joined the community of practice yet, please uh, join the DHS2 community of practice and uh, we will also make an announcement on Slack regarding how to receive your uh, final certificate once everything is completed and especially uh, about the time and whether the uh, examination will be opened um, for extended um, duration that also we will uh, let you know we will communicate to you on slack during the day and um, uh, the other thing the material is available to you so uh, you can always download the pdfs and uh, refer them so a little bit about the exam uh, it will be uh, it, it'll, uh, it'll be a one hour exam and most of the questions will will be in the format of multiple choice, extended matching questions and yes no type of questions. So everything will be based on uh, what we have discussed during the course of the academy. Uh, you are expected to do it individually but uh, you are allowed to re uh, you know refer your user documents material and dhs2 instance uh, i mean we don't have any issues with you doing that but you are expected to work alone by yourself because i mean it's not a kind of a, a very strict exam and very theoretical exam it, it we wanted it to be very close to uh, what you are doing when you are 
uh, really implementing DHS2. So you, when you are implementing DHS2, you always have access to all these uh, different user materials and the instance, uh, all this. So you don't have any issues you accessing it during the exam. Uh, so it will be a one hour exam and um, we will be starting tomorrow at the same time. So this, this will be 12.30 uh, p.m. Indian Standard Time. And then first we will do the feedback session. And following that, we'll start the uh, DHS2 um, uh, Tracker Use Academy final examination. Um, yeah, so that's what uh, I have from our team for now. But uh, I'm happy to take any questions if you have related to this final wrap up session, anything you want to clarify. And I must also mention, uh, 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 we have for the DHS, I mean, for the Asia region, we'll be having a DHS2 Asia conference, which will be there in Vietnam uh, in, uh, in first week of December. So this is again available in our academy uh, homepage. So it's an on-site in-person conference. It's not actually an academy, it's a conference. So we'll be discussing various use cases related to uh, uh, security, performance, right? And standard-based configurations. And there are many topics. The agenda is not finalized yet, but you will find in that web page uh, all different topics that will be discussed in this three-day conference uh, that we are going to have in December. So uh, we kindly invite all of you and to spread this information um, to your colleagues and networks. Uh, uh, you are free to join, but the thing is, I, I recommend you all to kind of uh, process the registration a bit uh, fast because it's just a couple of months away and uh, still we are not totally out of the pandemic. So some of the uh, processes regarding obtaining visa and um, other logistics uh, might take time. So I encourage you all to register uh, the conference soon if you are planning to uh, join. So that's it what I have from uh, our side. If there are any questions, you are free, uh, free uh, please uh, feel free to ask and also you can ask uh, later in on Slack. Thank you, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, uh, I would like to actually ask uh, the exam, I already asked it and you mentioned it, but uh, on the conclusion, uh, you told us that the exam will be open by tomorrow. Do we have to read the update in the Slack or it's already fixed? Uh, yes, so about the exam, I mean, because the thing is like exam uh, as it is scheduled, will be starting somewhere. Um, I mean, I can't tell you the exact time because uh, we have a feedback session before that, but I suggest you join at 12.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time, that which is the usual time we, we, we started the academy all these days. So join at that time. So probably we will have the feedback session for like a half an hour. Uh, I'm just saying like uh, it's a rough estimate of uh, time that will take for the feedback. And then following that, we will uh, start the uh, exam. So this is a one hour exam. You will be individually doing it on the Moodle itself, meaning like when you open the exam, uh, it, it's, it's uh, uh, time based. So depending on what time you start, you will be having exactly one hour to finish the exam. So that's how it is done usually. But uh, I have noted all the requests received so far, uh, asking for an extension, which I'm not yet in a position to comment at this moment of time. But uh, we will communicate with the DHS2 Academy team and get back to you on this within the course of the day. And we will uh, 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 announce this on Slack. So please follow the Slack today for updates and we will uh, let you know. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Are there any other questions? And uh, please uh, kindly provide feedback, the daily feedback for all the sessions that we have conducted uh, till today. Um, we, we really appreciate all the feedback you have provided. Uh, so kindly do that also. And uh, try to complete all the graded uh, assignments um, that you have uh, to do in these four days till today. Right, so uh, if we don't have any any other questions, I think we can wind up for the day. Let me quickly check. Uh, yeah, I don't see any major questions related to the exam or today's session in the chat. Right, so that's it. Thank you very much for joining um, uh, today. And we are looking forward 
to seeing all of you for the final day tomorrow and all the best uh, for the exam preparation good luck see you tomorrow thank you thank you pamod